Welcome to the show. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. And today we are discussing the Indian film R R R. <laughs> we'll laugh. We'll argue. <laughs> we might get a little too into it, but at the end of the day, they are just movies. Ah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler. A recent five-star review from user the best panda three exclamation marks remarked the best one they love our different views on all of the interesting topics the critics never harshly disagree always civil well actually there were a couple times uh, the uh, prestige episode the fountain episode uh, st- any most of the Star Wars is pretty bit yeah it gets rough out there but today we're friends <laughs> <laughs> Next. Just like the main characters in this movie. Sorry, hold, hold your horses. Next, next week we're yep. gonna do Lightyear. Ooh, what is that? Is, is that a prequel? I'm stoked. No, uh, it's, it's a side story, weird origin. So the way they describe it is: this is the movie that Andy would have seen in the Toy Story universe that got him excited to oh, buy so it's the a fictional movie. Even in the what Toy do you Story mean? Universe. Of course, it's fictional. Well, no, I know. <laughs> I, I was wondering if like Buzz Lightyear in the Toy Story canon because like was uh well in the in this movie yeah buzz is a real character but yes. it's supposed to be like wait you're telling the, me buzz lightyear isn't a real human being <laughs> buzz what? off this okay. does not take place like in the toy story universe okay. or we get it now that's okay. next week today though it's rrr so david give me your rating out of 10 rrr doesn't simply balance its fiery message and oceans of insane spectacle it somehow works them in harmony to create an entrancing cinema experience that transcended all my expectations i want to say uh Nine out of ten. Wow. I might give it a buffered rating rated eight point eight. It's oh. hard because as we were talking about a little bit before the show, it's presented in Hindi on Netflix, even though the original language is Telugu. Yeah. And so the dub there was moments where the dub took me out of it a little bit. But I this movie hit me hard, man. I w- was not excited to w- watch it. It was What w- really? No, it was like Sunday at nine. I'd just gotten home from a trip away. Mm. And I was like, oh man, I gotta sit down and watch a three hour movie. Almost instantly, I was like this is fucking sick. <laughs> wow. Riley. Uh, my slogan is, after having Western action blockbusters devolve into boring, mindless drivel, watching RRR is like what I imagine it's like for colorblind people when they put on those spo- special glasses <laughs> so they can see color. This was a uh, uh, mind-blowing experience. I'm giving so, it a 9.5 yes! out of 10. Uh, I also, I mean, I, I guess I sat down and I was kind of like, all right, everyone says it's really good, but we'll see. Yeah. And... It just exceeded every expectation 100%. I had, except for the language thing, which we'll get yeah. into. James? Yeah, the language thing was a, was a downer. I was like, is this all ADR? <laughs> what is happening? It is. Um, so coming in the opposite of David, I was hyped for this because I had seen all of these articles about how, like, what is Hollywood doing? Those They have no imagination. This is cinema. And then, like Riley, pretty much immediately I, I had an opinion uh, and it was, this sucks. When is this going to end? 4.2 out of 10. <gasps> I, James! I, let me, okay, I appreciate that this is a very highly ranked movie for a lot of people. It has like over eight on IMDb. I like what they're, I'm sure it's good for that. But like no. for me, it just doesn't do the things that I need from a movie. My <sighs> slogan that I have written down is, does the Hindi language have a word for cringe? Whoa! I, I, uh, d- it just doesn't do anything for Whoa! me. Couldn't wait for it to be over. This is a, almost as mind blowing an experience as I as I had when watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm, my brain is shattered. Yeah. How could you? I I, I what want I, you to explain. I'm going to after, right after this message nice. from our sponsor, Storyblocks. Ever needed a quick clip for a video but didn't have the capacity to make it yourself? Well, Storyblocks helps you bring your stories to life without sacrificing due to time, budget, or resource. There are over a million royalty-free assets for you to choose from, including 4K HD footage, Adobe templates, music, images, and a wire and a wide array of diverse and inclusive content. There are subscriptions for every budget, so you can choose the plan that works for you, from their unlimited all-access plan that gives you unlimited video and audio downloads to enterprise licensing, so your entire company has access to assets when you need them. We use Storyblocks out of Linus Tech Tips because we don't always have time to get the perfect shot, but we don't have to because we have Storyblocks. So take your videos to the next level by going to storyblocks.com slash TJM. Thanks to Vessi Footwear for sponsoring today's show. Vessi Footwear is known for being lightweight, easy to pack, comfortable, and most importantly, water resistant with its Dymatex technology. Their everyday move shoe is designed with added support at the midsole and better breathability to keep up with your active lifestyle. And I've learned that if you chuck them in the washing machine, they come out pretty fresh. Yeah, I do that all the time. Take them off and put them back on with ease, thanks to the handy pull tab. They also uh, made, oh, they're made creature free. So every step you take will be guilt free. Wow. Uh, your feet will thank you for wearing these. So say goodbye to wet socks and check them out at vessi.com slash TJM and use code TJM. 
Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring today's episode. Secret Lab chairs are under my butt right now, and they're engineer engineered to keep your butt comfortable for long hours at work and play. Mm. Their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four-way lumbar support, comes with a magnetic memory foam head pillow that I'm smashing with the back of my cranium right now, and is also offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Napa leather. <laughs> with up to a five-year extended warranty and a 49-day return policy, you're covered if anything goes wrong. So learn more about Secret Lab at lmg.gg slash secret lab tjm. Oh, yeah. TJM. Oh, man. James, so, what I mean, this happened? might be our most contentious divide of all time. I am so happy for you guys. You watched this and just it was so dope for you. Was well, it like what? How, what was your viewing experience? Like, what was you? What? what how are you? What was the environment? Were things uh, happening? Were no, things no, no, distracting no. you? No, no, no. It was, how so emotionally? It, it was were a long you? movie, so I was like, yeah. I'm gonna do the first hour of this during the day, yeah. which is what I did with Godfather Two. Um, so I got 45 minutes in during uh, my son napping. Mm -hmm. No one else was home. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I, I finished her off later on. Well, after that first 45, I was like, okay, I don't care about this movie. So I did the next 45 with like some stuff happening, and then I did the last two hours in perfect like movie going experience. So like, I think I had sort of a similar experience. I think I watched the first forty-five minutes, maybe fifty minutes, uh, and then like on on Saturday, and then I finished it on Sunday. And uh, I remember coming away being like, "Okay, this is definitely fun," but it hasn't like completely blown my mind yet. But then I think around that mark, around the forty-five minute, fifty fifty minute mark, is when. Um, or maybe shortly after that is when they have the first dance sequence. Yeah. And that's when it really like solidifies it for me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is what we're doing. Hell yeah, yeah. Let's go. I was the opposite. I was like, this is so brutal. Oh my God. The white people in this movie. Oh, see. Uh, I, okay. I, so yeah, fair let's enough. Let's talk about that for a second. Cause I, I think that it's not just, they got the worst actors they could find and gave them zero direction. I think it's purposely supposed to other you from them and make you feel like you you hate them even more because like mm. they're just like awkward to be around i don't know if it's that i mean you might be right but i i i got the feeling that it was just they were directed that way because that's kind of the the um indian movie style i don't want to mm. say bollywood because we'll get into how why this is not really a bollywood movie it's technically a tollywood movie and there's all sorts of bollywood derivatives various woods yeah <laughs> there's lots of Hollywoods. Um, but I thought that was just kind of like the style. So mm -hmm. you, you hire white actors who, you know, are, are doing well within this industry because they have this like sort of over the top cheesy style, which is, it's interesting because hmm. I would have guessed that no one in this movie has, uh, none of the white people have ever acted in a movie ever. Exactly. But, but that's uh, not true. The governor yeah. is in the MCU. Yeah. Like <laughs> I was shocked. They He's all... one of Thor's guys. Yeah. I was, I had no idea that they were. I, as um, I assumed that it was just the same thing that Hollywood had done in the past where it's like, okay, we need ethnic person here. Yeah. Get whoever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, Cause no one who like knows will be watching this. And then, it, but at this time it turns out I'm watching this yeah. and I know that guy sucks. Well, yeah, no, I mean, so Ray Stevenson is the governor. He yeah. played uh, the Punisher in Punisher war zone. Uh, he was in Thor movies. He was in Kill the Irishman, Three Musketeers, Star Wars Rebels, and Clone Wars. What? Yeah, anyways. What were you saying, David? <laughs> Wait, is Allison Duty? She's She was in, in Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Okay, guys. <gasps> She's the evil Nazi woman. Okay, though, just because this guy was the Punisher, that movie has 29% of Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, I'm just saying movie. that he is a Western actor. No, but he's, he's not like someone who they... I would definitely say that they all kind of suck. And I think yeah. a big part is that they probably just didn't get the direction that they crave. But... Uh, it's fine because they're supposed to be like mustache twirling and you're yes. supposed to be like, I fucking hate them. Bring them down. No, yeah. The thing is that they're too hateable. Mm. They're so hateable that it brings you out of the movie because they're cartoonish. Mm. The what. whole movie is cartoonish. Yeah. yeah, which is my problem with it. It's just like, and the, again, what I'm saying is I, it's like cuisine. Okay. People can recognize a lot of people love sushi and then they can still say, but it's not for me. I don't like sushi. Right. That's how I feel about this movie. Okay. It's like, sure, they're trying to do this kind of tone. Turns out, this is exactly what I hate in a movie. Mm. <laughs> I didn't know that. I try to be open-minded. I, yeah. I, I would love to be the kind of person who just loves anime, loves Bollywood, like, is so open. Mm. I think of myself as that kind of person. And it just turns out, every time I watch one of these movies, I just don't like them. Yeah, see, like, I feel like... Like, I hate that I don't like Spirited Away. I hate that about myself. Right, right. I'm sorry. I don't hate that. <laughs> I wish I see, loved it. See, I hate I'll that watch, about both of you. <laughs> I, I'll watch Spirited Away and I'll be like, okay, 
I understand that a lot of people really love this movie, but I think that on some level, those people are wrong, you know? <laughs> but I think that when I watch a movie like this, even though it's so, so, so different from, like, typical Western uh, cinema, um, I think that it's... I mean, that's why I'm so flabbergasted because, like, this movie just had a way of breaking down my expectations 100%. about what I want in a movie or what I what I thought I wanted to see. And it was like, hey, just relax. Enjoy this super awesome dance number. Yep. Even though it's, like, kind of weird and cringy and cheesy, just, like, just relax a bit I think and have a nice time. I think expectations played a role for me. Mm. Like, if I had been told, like, yo, this movie is a joke. Like, go with your friends, be, like, drunk and high, make fun of it, talk in the theater yeah. and laugh. I probably would have had a great time. See, I think, but in, I'm and, sorry. I think because of the hype that I saw, I thought I was going to see like, this is actually legitimately better than anything out of Hollywood. This is like India's inception. Like it's incredible. But it's, that's it's, what I was expecting. I think it, it it's better in its own way. I think it's not self-serious in any way, but I think that for me... No, but, okay, I agree with you. I think it is better in its own way. I think that people who like this stuff, yeah. it is does transcend what Hollywood's mm-hmm. doing if you like this flavor, this cuisine. But I would disagree that it's not self-serious. I think it, it is. I think it's a bit of both. And I think it, it knows when to do the serious things and knows when to just have fun. Because I think you're right. It gets there. It's like two historical figures that were important uh, figures in the rebellion. Uh, and they're portrayed and like they're they're deified. And it's like it's a movie about this very important time in, yeah. in India, uh, India's culture. But I think that it's, it's like... Uh, to me, it feels almost like um, Inglourious Bastards. It's like a, a historical revisionist history porn. Yeah, where it's, it's kind of like, like Django. Yeah, for sure. Where it's like, right. hey, you hated these people, but now you're going to hate them so much more because they're so stupidly cartoony. Yeah, and but, then, while, but, but it's more cartoony than Django even. Yes, I would say while Django yes. ha- kind of has this sort of like tongue-in-cheek element yeah. to it, this does not have tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. This is like, we are over the top, we are cheesy, yeah. but we are 100% serious about the cheesiness. Yes. Like, yeah. w- there, what what I would describe it is not like cheesy, but like just earnest. Like it is yes. just like it, it, it is, it is unapologetic about the fact that it is going all out. Like it knows that it's bombastic. Yeah. It no, it's not trying to do a sort of like, Oh, it's just, you know, like a dramatic, like, I mean, it is dramatic, it but it's not trying moments. to do like sort of the Western idea of like, it's dark and, and, yeah. and you have to be serious about the whole, there's about no the whole like time. realism element to it. Yes. It's like, it's like, here's the story told through like telephone game of 10 generations yeah right where you're like your grandma's telling the kids except there's lots of blood yeah um, it's, it's not like this is what it was actually like so when it's it's not schindler's list nope right you know this, this so film- when i see or it's not even django like when they when miss buxton is like i want her for my mantelpiece <laughs> i'm like what like i'm one with okay she's like why two, isn't there more blood like two things number one i know near zero about the occupation of india by these colonists by the British uh, Empire, yeah. yet I'm simultaneously positive that there was many atrocities over many years yes. that are awful probably worse than anything I saw in this movie at the same time I just I, I, it, well, I still okay. find it unrealistic that someone was like I want her for my mantelpiece I'm just like, no, I think that it, to me it wasn't about the girl it was about the, the deer and it's like kind of like a double entendre where they're they're objectifying this girl, but he, she's talking about the deer that he's captured. Because she, mm. she's looking at the deer, but it's about the subtext is about the girl. Right. Okay. On that note, we should uh, let, let me do a synopsis. Sure. Guys, okay? Oh yeah, that part. It's 1920, and the British Empire rules India. When the tyrannical governor Buxton and his sadistic wife Catherine kidnap Molly, a young girl with a gift for sinning, singing, her tribe's protector Kamaram Beam. Well, I'm not going to say these right. I'm sorry travels to Delhi to retrieve her. The British offer a promotion to any officer that catches Beam, so the young Rama Raju volunteers and goes undercover. Beam and Raju meet, coincidentally, working together to save a boy caught in a train crash, (laughs) and then they become extremely close friends while hiding their missions from each other. Raju helps Beam befriend Buxton's niece, Jenny, one of the only nice white people in India, allowing Beam to confirm Molly's location at the governor's palace and plan the rescue. On the night of the mission, Raju is bitten by a venom a snake while interrogating Beam's tribesmen, Beam saves his life with a tribal antidote, revealing his true purpose in Delhi to a shocked but incapacitated Raju. Later, Beam and his men attack the palace with a truck full of wild <laughs> animals, but a recovered Raju arrives in his police uniform and fights Beam, who is forced to surrender. 
In a flashback, we learn of Raju's true mission, fulfilling a promise he made to his dying father to deliver guns to his village of rebels by rising through the British ranks. Raju is promoted, gaining gun delivery privileges, but is charged with publicly flogging Beam, who refuses to kneel in exchange for mercy. Instead, he sings a defiant song that inspires a riot. It also inspires Raju to change tactics. He's able to free Beam and Molly, but is arrested. Months later, Beam and Molly are on the run when they meet Raju's fiancé and cousin? Sita, who reveals the truth of Raju's mission. Beam immediately returns to Delhi, infiltrates the prison with Jenny's help, and escapes into the woods with Raju mounted on his shoulders. Hell yeah. Armed with a bow and arrows from a shrine of Lord Rama, Raju and Beam fight through an army of British forces that attack them in the forest, eventually launching a flaming motorcycle into a room full of TNT inside Buxton's palace, destroying it. Beam retrieves two massive pallets of guns and they kill Buxton, splattering his blood across an image of the British crown. And it the covered the never, so it's the sun sets yeah. on the British Empire. <laughs> right, right. The two men promise to work together and Beam returns Molly to her mother while Raju delivers the weapons to his village, fulfilling his promise. Oh, yeah. So many moments. So many sick moments. Oh, man, this man. movie won me over as soon as Raju does his like flying over the fence and fights a thousand people. Yeah. I when I so I started this movie by myself and I when Cassie came back home, I had to kind of like sell her a little bit and I was like like he fights a thousand people. And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, he fights like five people, 10 people." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. no. he fights a thousand people." <laughs> <laughs> and I that, it's such a cool fight and it's like it's silly and it's over the top, yes. but it's it does these really cool moments of like him fighting, swinging, doing stuff, and then getting pinned down like that. I like when the camera came in under, underneath yeah. the heap. That was cool. And he has to like, he grabs the guy's ear and then he rips the guy yeah. off. Like it's like, it's a brutal fight, but it's so well choreographed. It's so kinetic. It's such a fun, fun and whole thing. There's like a few things where you're like, that doesn't make sense, but you just, I learned to turn my brain, that part of my brain yes. off. And the it's, sense of scale, there's so many zoom outs where yeah. it's just impossible. There's no way to find the person There's no, or there's no way to fight through all these people because yeah. it's just so large. Yeah, I, I don't know how, because obviously we're all not super educated in uh, Indian cinema, but I don't know how uh, common this is to have this sort of like crazy outlandish kung fu basically kung fu style movie scene in, in, in I, I hear that it's more common in tollywood which is okay. like this is a telugu language film which is one of the smaller uh subsets of indian cinema bollywood is the big giant one and those are hindi language and this is telugu language uh anyways so apparently this is more common in the telugu movies okay. uh, and particularly this director well we know across india they love beating people with sticks sure what <laughs> I don't know. Have you never seen videos of people getting hit with sticks? Like <laughs> cops beating you with sticks and shit? <laughs> I haven't, I mean. This guy yeah. beats a lot of people with sticks. Yeah, with okay. That, with yeah, well, I mean, he, he beats like a thousand yeah. people. It's but, a great way to, to promise the tone of the movie yeah. because it's like, okay, this is what we're watching. Things are going to be over the top. We know not to take things like super literally. Obviously, in real life, these are based on real characters. Obviously, in real life, this guy didn't like actually jump over a fence with no assistance and like... <laughs> and there's some substance right at the beginning where they... He, right away, he's confronted with being called a traitor. Mm. Yeah. Like, what are you doing being one of them? Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because there are other... Like, there's lots of uh, Indian people in the British forces, but... But he's a super cop. But he's a super cop. cop. Yeah, I like that declaration that this movie has superheroes in it, basically, right away. This is like an Indian Marvel movie. A hundred percent. I thought of it. There's a yeah. couple moments where, like, it's slow motion posing beside right. each other as they're, like, doing a coordinated move. And I was there for it, man. But that's I what's so there. beautiful about it. It's like they have super strength, but it's more like... And we're exact like, we're, I understand that the movie actually isn't telling me that these guys have super, have super strength. They are mythic... They're, they were real characters, but like the, the people that we're watching are based on these mythic character on, on these real world characters. And yeah. the ones that we're actually watching are these mythic reconstructions. Yeah. It's like it's like fan fiction. And we're just like, you know what? They were so instrumental to, you know, the, the Indian culture of revolution against the British. They're yeah. larger than life. Yeah. So that's like it, I, it's well, fine. And there's an element of fantasy in the sense that these two real people were active about a decade apart. So they never right. would have like met in real life. Like like Raju was dead in 24 Whereas, uh, like, Akhtar's character was, like, kind of more, like, I think it was in the 30s. In the 30s to yeah. 44. 
Yeah, um, but, but they have a hell of a bromance oh in 2022. God. Hell yeah! Oh I, my gosh! I, yeah, all the superhero stuff. I love the one of my favorite moments in that movie is when they they break into the the villa or whatever, and then they spin the trunk around a bunch, and then it reveals all the animals flying out at once. Oh my god! And he has oh his god. two flames. Oh my yeah. god! It's such a sick. It's the movie does such a good job. This, of this like, is exactly what what I hate. Yeah, because I'm just like. Where do those animals come from? Did someone own a zoo that was not set up? What are you up, talking about? They, 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 the whole intro sequence for for Beam is that they're capturing the tiger. Oh, I thought that was just to eat or something. Well, but you don't eat tigers. I don't know what they. He do. originally was going for a wolf, and then he's like, "Oh, oh shit, it's a tiger!" And then they so end that up was, capturing that the tiger. That was part of this plan. I don't know. I, I, I we know that they captured. They have the ability to capture tigers. Okay, well, it's like that. why would you like? Yeah, so, but I wasn't done I mean, listing why I didn't like it. Okay, so I get two more things. <laughs> it's like. There's way more animals suddenly than there were cages. And then number three, these animals are not acting like they would. It's just like a movie contrivance. Like, they're all ready to fight now. I think they would just be, like, scared and run. I, did, I don't know. I, just, I, I wasn't I there for it. Go See, fight I, or flight. My brain was too on for yeah, this movie. I, think I 100% <laughs> yes. don't disagree with your assessment of a real situation in which... Uh, animals are whipped around in the back of a truck. They would and then stay in those out. cages. But, you should have been. Uh, you should have been enhanced, James. Yeah, yeah, but this is. Yeah, it's like I. I think the agreement you make with this movie is to let that stuff go. Yes, it's like there's. Yeah. You have to level some. Accept some level of friction. Right. Don't also, do what I did, guys. Yeah. Also, they show the. At one point, uh, Beam is like carrying meat, and then he transfers it to his buddy, and then he feeds it into the. Oh cage. yeah, that's right. That was yeah. a little bit set up. Yeah, I'll take that one back. I concede. Nice. <clears throat> um. Yeah, uh, the movie does such a good job of just like one upping itself in terms of intensity. <laughs> like that first dance scene is like super over the top, and it's basically a music video in the middle I of fucking love in it. the middle of the show. Uh, but then after that, I'm like, okay, that was pretty crazy. All right, now I know what to expect. You know, we're kind of like it's sort of like surreal, you know, musical numbers going on. And then the the truck thing happens. I'm like, okay, fine. The, now my <laughs> expectations are up to even again. And then. I, I forget what the next part is, but like what the thing that's sticking in my mind is when he rest, he, he pulls the bars off yeah. of the solitary cell <laughs> with just his strength. I'm like, okay. And he, they, yeah, it turns out those bars, they were just form a megazord. Those bars were just connected to a wooden <laughs> lid and then he just breaks it. <laughs> that, that's possible. I think one of the things that the movie does really well, because there's a reason why this, I think is transcending Indian influence is going worldwide mm. is that it does the actions and like the physics of the action really well It's not realistic. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean the physics it does? So it it's not realistic but like the the movement is believable. There's yes. a lot of stuff like like let's it's not talk confusing. About, it's not disoriented. Totally. And like you oh think, yeah, okay. I'll like agree you think that. about the scene when uh, like Roger's on his shoulders and like the way they're running around spinning. It's not like like clearly like just a CG thing like running around. It's like yeah. oh it looks like they were like actually running and like doing stuff. Yeah. And it's silly and stupid. And he's like spinning around doing his guns. Every, everything everywhere all at once vibes. Yeah, totally. Big time. Totally. And it, right. it it my brain wasn't constantly fighting me on these absolutely wild things because like it looks like there was some element of it that was shot and like the practical effects were good. The CG's bad, but most of the action like <laughs> there's like a physicality and to it that grounded it for me in a way that allowed me to just accept the weirdness. Yeah. I'll accept that, but there were some like car accidents. I remember there was a near, yeah. near the end, near that scene, there's like a, a, <laughs> a, a truck car. that goes into the sky and it just like goes, it's like it accelerates <laughs> like, when it's already in the air. It's, it's like, like, what? Buxton, Buxton oh, fires yeah. at Raju's car and he hits the side of it and it just does like five flips well, to and, the right. And the movie doesn't really show it, but he, the Buxton gets launched in the air, yeah. right? So he's launched in the air, but then all of a sudden when it's shot on him, he's completely stationary in the air and he's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh. <laughs> yes, I saw that. But part. like that, see, that's the type of thing where I'm just like, this is a kung fu movie. Yeah. You know, if it it's was like, animated, you know, if this was just like an episode of Dragon Ball, it would have been totally like, normal. Okay, when you watch Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or something like that, you're like, okay, they couldn't jump that high. They couldn't, you know, balance on a beam like that. But it's like you just forgive it because it's it's a kung fu movie. It's just like you know, we're, we're it's a spectacle for the sake of spectacle. And I think, like you said, one of the things I like about this movie is that it it it's like it feels like a legendary retelling or a, a retelling of a legend right. uh, and it, it it almost deifies these two characters in a way that i think is it's cool and i think it's like such a celebration of indian culture and uh for someone who never get, gets to see that I, yeah. I felt excited by like this indian cinema and i i spent hours like looking at articles and like looking at these characters and like right. the gods that it's all based off i was like wow this is so cool and so exciting and so interesting yeah so like apparently people were freaking out about this movie i believe uh it. not only because of how great it is to watch but also because it uh like it's called rrr because not of like the story or anything 
it that was its original um what do you call that code name oh, like okay. working title yeah, working like title shot, yeah. uh because the because of the three people involved like the three main people it's directed by ss rajamuli who's mm-hmm. like this you know legendary guy who's that's our I've heard I've heard he's the Indian James Cameron Sure yeah he, he's, is, he's he's known for these like historical movies, epics uh is the highest grossing Indian movie and it's a factor of 3 over the next one Wow okay right. so there's that there's NT Rama Rao Jr who plays Beam and that's the second R and then Ram Charan is the third guy Yeah who is um R- Raju. Yeah. And, no, those uh, guys are, so like, those guys are jacked in this movie. They They're called so it working jacked. title RRR just because those three guys were involved. Yep. And then from there, they were just like, let's just keep it that way. And then yeah. they, you know, when they translated the title into other things, they yeah. put in like the rise, roar, revolt, okay, revolt I, is the English that was one. So, I don't know why. Normally it's kind of stuff like that I find so cheesy when it's like, it shows you that each section divide into story, <laughs> yeah. fire, water, and that'll become like fire and water will become like a reoccurring thing. Right. But then when it switches to ri- Rise, Roar, Revolt, I was like, oh, yeah, here we fucking go. <laughs> especially, <laughs> yeah, because, <not> me. No. <laughs> especially because they had done this the crazy stunt of the motorcycle and, and horse off the thing. Like, they had saved the kid. <laughs> it was so wild. And I, I was like, I was that. so ready. Let's talk Yo, about that. All right, one of my notes I wrote down was like, what? We're on chapter two? We're seven minutes in. You can't have chapters that short. Yeah. Was there going to be like 50 <laughs> chapters in this movie? Yeah, well, do they do No, that? there's three, but they're all in the first 15 minutes. Like, it's right. like the pre-title sequence, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then the opening credits are like 20 minutes in or something oh my, like that. Yeah. It's like, well, there's, there's, well, there's, there's, there's like overture. three minutes of, of, of credits right at the beginning. Yeah, of like it's just overture. a little different. No, but I, what I like about that is that it, I think we talked about it a little bit in Anna Dune, um, but it, it feels like a movie like this is an event. Yes. And it's like you go and like you settle in and it's like it's an overture like you're at the symphony or you're at the opera and it's like there's before anyone stops talking there's like a music playing in this building and it's going to introduce you to the themes of the movie uh, and I think that the the intro got me in the mood it kind of like settled me down and it was like the three minutes of yeah prepare your mind and in prepare that same, your body in that same way the music we were told after doing Andan doing that a lot of music doesn't just and music videos don't just get released on their own mm. in India they're o- often part of movies. So when a movie like this has like three or four songs, it's like those are the pop songs you're gonna listen to all year. Right, right. Yep. Nacho, 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 nacho. Oh, it's apparently it's not too. Yeah, I like. Yeah, let's talk. About, no, what we were gonna hey, talk brother, about. I want to talk about that. Dizzy nacho. The, the that train. first big set piece. I was well, actually, that's the second <clears throat> one because the first one is when he fights a million people. Yep. The next one is when the Beam, tiger? Beam, and Raju meet, and they're like, "Is the tiger? Oh, the tiger's set another one. Okay, there's a lot of giant set pieces." Yeah. I want to talk about that bridge one though. Well, the first one is him <laughs> taking on the thousand people, but yeah, yeah. No, no. We t- yeah, anyways. Oh, okay, sorry. Keep going. Train. Yeah. Explodes. Uh, that was just. Whew. <laughs> uh, I, I, okay. So I like, don't know, man. You guys tell me through your lens because I was sitting there like, why are they doing sign language? Just talk to each other. Fuck. But, so like, I think I had like a moment of what you're talking about where like, okay, the boy's in trouble. Raju's on the bridge. He is looking around to see what he can do. He somehow sees this other like incomprehensible actions i'm like what 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 does that the mean the guy's just like taps your shoulder twice pulls down his eyelid yeah. points that way and, and he's, he's just like, like yeah. oh you want me to dive to my death with a rope behind oh, me oh you want me to drive a motorcycle and you jump on a horse and we have a, a rope together and we head right at each other and then split opposite ways so that we meet in the, under the bridge like what Got it. <laughs> Without any verbal <laughs> communication. Like, what the hell? Um, I guess it's a movie contrivance. It's like fine. If they had a, sat down and had a little game plan, it would have been so lame. See, to yeah. me, to me, it wasn't like fine. Like I had that moment where I was like, okay, what, what? But what then is you this? have to buy into this. Yes, movie. and then when once yeah. they start doing it, I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. And so at, at the point, like at at that point, I can either choose. To be like, this is stupid, or be like, okay, so I'm jumping awesome. on. So I, I knew, let's go. I knew that this decision was before me, right? But I just couldn't. Mm. I don't know what it was that day. Yeah. I don't know. I had mm. some spicy food the night before, or yeah. something. You know, I've been there. I've been there. Maybe I've been, you've been like, hit instead, by sticks I was too like, much. And James. why did that kid's boat just fall over when there was no wave? It just flipped over for no reason. Where's the wave? I, you, so that's it was the train. I know that. It, oh, but you're saying if you it watch didn't. it, there's just no wave oh, yeah. created. He just oh. flips. It's just like that's where my brain was at the whole movie. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the that's water tough. simulation is I've all de- off. I've definitely watched movies that I have high expectation for, and then it's like not hitting the way that I wanted to, and then all of a sudden my brain starts com- competing with the movie or like fighting against the movie. And I've been there. It's tough, and it's I know that it's a hard movie. It's not a hard movie to recommend. I've recommended it to everyone in this building that I, <laughs> I've had a conversation <laughs> with today. I'll go speak to them. But um, it's no one that like. 
you have to kind of like feel out a person if they're the kind of person that can just buy into something silly. Yeah. I I will say that there are some parts where the silliness does definitely take me out of it. I mean, like it was early on. I think like as the movie went on, I I I bought I bought in more and more and more. Yeah. But early on, it's definitely kind of rough as you're starting as you're trying to like get the tone of the movie. Yeah. Like in the beginning scene where uh Molly is kidnapped and <laughs> oh my god governor the, the 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 governor gives this whole speech about how the bullet is Cost you know pound. yeah it's like not worth wasting on on uh, the natives life Brown and rubbish, stuff i think he says yeah something like that and uh we get this whole scene where she the mom gets like cracked over the head i thought she was dead Same. um and then the the scene what do you mean ends, her finger twitches well i, I mean like, the you can body be dead that's, 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 that's telling you she's still alive okay fair enough uh i thought she was dead but anyways uh then it like cuts to the uh, one of the title se- one of the title things where it says the story or the fire or water I forget I think which one fire it is. was the next sure one. um and the music is this like goofy tuba it's like brah, 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 brah. like it's <laughs> like it was funny it was fun it, it sounded like funny music to me and yeah. I was like what is going on this is so there are like moments like that where I think that early on if you haven't bought in yet yeah it it is it is well, off putting because you're like that's a bad choice. I think that's true in any movie when there's like three different stories that aren't connected yet that they're talk like that are just cutting between and I didn't understand how it all tied together mm. uh, until uh, I guess you see the governess and the governor in the scene where they're talking about they have to capture Beam. Yeah. Um, then I was like, oh, I see how everything is is connected. And I I, I was worried about tonal whiplash in this movie because I found that with Anna Dune is mm. like a this crazy tonal whiplash where one scene is like they're singing about how happy and in love they are. And the next scene is like, he's being harvested for organs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and this, I think past like the first 20 minutes when it's those three stories, I think it did a better job of like riding those waves. And there's crazy moments of like funny to like, Oh, this is really serious, but yeah. it never felt uh, like I c- couldn't handle the way it was jumping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I've heard people talking about how, um, you know, in, in comparison to Western movies, we have things like, you know, if Ryan Reynolds is in a movie or something and he's got this sort of like, like, like movies have a way of telling us that it's like, hey, you know, this it, chill out. You know, it's just a movie. You know, yep. we're going to have certain things happen in the movie that are not believable. And we know that they're not really believable, but it's like we're going to wink at you to be like, you know, we know this. But this movie doesn't doesn't do that. It just is like is what it is and expects you to completely buy in to the fact that these characters are completely earnest, whether it's like sort of the romantic comedy part with with Beam and Jenny. When, not my favorite part of the when movie. Raju is just kind of like, hey, buddy, like, hey, yeah, well, let's get you, let's so get you a girl, yeah, like, great. blah, blah, blah. It's not great. And <laughs> it's just like kind of lighthearted comedy type stuff. And you have Beam, who's this like badass warrior being like, oh, oh, oh I don't know if I should. Oh, oh is that all supposed to be funny? Because I was starting to think, I'm like, is there any comic relief in this movie at all? I think it's supposed, supposed to, to be, be sort of like, com- yeah, I funny. I think like the dance is supposed to kind of be your break from the right. serious and stuff. Yeah. And so like, especially yeah. the scene where like, okay, they're the last two men uh, dancing oh and then you get this moment where they're like, okay, hey, we've defeated everyone else. And then there's these shots of both of them being like slowly turning towards the other yeah. one being like, we have to defeat each other now. Raja knows he has to throw the yeah. I love, yeah. see what I love I think about it's, this. I think it is a bit like, it's supposed to be fun. Yeah. It's not supposed to be like, this is serious. I think what's exemplary of why this movie works for me is that it's aware of what it's putting out and then it it makes you want it. And then it's like, you want it? You want it? And it gives it to you. You think about the dance and it's like the shitty British dude being like, oh, you couldn't dance for like, if like uh, the music hits you in the face, like you can't salsa. You can't <laughs> yeah. flamenco. flamenco. You uh, do all these things, and then you're like, okay, yeah, they're obviously gonna dance off it, but like it keeps wait, you're building and waiting. You're like, come on, just dance, just dance. You're and looking for a partner, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm the best dancer in the land. I second that. Yeah, I'll vouch for that. And I think the movie knows that it's silly and stupid, but like it when it happens, you're like, oh yeah. And then it's a sick dance, like when they're doing the, like the leg whip thing. Oh like, my! I got gosh. up and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, every so movement hard is it was so. To do. Every movement is so powerful. Yeah. And then the it's way like, <laughs> his the villain's face is in that. Scene. <laughs> When he starts, when he starts doing the, Do the dance, dance himself, because like they teach them all the dance, and then they're like, "Okay, now we have to do the dance," and yeah. all the white people are doing the dance, and they start falling. The ladies get in, but like, yeah. but when the bad guy, white guy, uh, starts doing the dance, and Raju gives him like a big giant thumbs up. <laughs> It's like they're trying to like compete with each other and defeat each other, but he's just happy that he's yeah. doing the dance. I know. I was kind of hoping it's that so that's the power of dance, baby. Uh, I was hoping that he would have a character turn where he'd be like, okay, maybe they're not so bad. Yeah. But that's not this movie. I've been to an Indian wedding and they've taught me 
some dance moves. That's fun. And it was a wonderful experience because they were very patient with me. I didn't really know what I was doing. It felt like that. But at the same time, it was like a competition. It was so, it was, it was just wonderful. Yep. <laughs> we we kind of skipped over the train scene. Um, and I, I I just like the setup of it where there's like the, the where the Which train, one's this? the train explodes and then they're saving the kid. Oh yeah, okay. Um, like there's the, the one shot as the scene's building of the shadow of the train passing on the water. Mm -hmm. And it's like a beautiful shot. There's like lots of really good visual yeah. storytelling. There's uh, a bunch of shots where I'm like, dang, that's a, that's a, a well-composed shot. There's a couple yeah. nice shots. But then I don't know how the movie just like it, 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 like I was saying kind of in the previous thing is, is it gives you just enough to know, like they're not going to do that. No way. They're no, <laughs> no, no. The answer is always yes. And then they, they, oh, you're right. The answer is always yes. And when they tie the rope around their waist and then they jump off the bridge and they swing and then they always find a way to escalate it one more time. So like, man, they're going to swing and like counterweight each other and yeah. got the kid. But it's like, no, no, no. One of them has to grab the kid, throw it to the other guy. <laughs> He's like, I was like, why does he have the flag? Yeah. Why is he dragging it in the water? And like, then he throws the that tube, wraps himself in this wet flag to protect right. himself from the flame. It just, it gives you the yes. And then it gives you more and how it never it, like, stops. Yeah. And, and you're asking, how did he know to do that? <laughs> but the movie just tells you over and over and over. It doesn't matter. It, doesn't matter. it, it did it because it made it's me cool. feel like a foreigner. Like, well, I am not American, but because we're so close to America, we're kind of like them. But it made me feel like I was farther from America and watching an American movie when Spider-Man lands in front of a big American flag or something. I was like, mm. oh, that's obvious pandering that's yeah how, like oh a giant indian flag okay i, I know what this movie's See, message is so now that brings me to something that is interesting uh because this movie has not been completely without controversy hmm. obviously it is depicting um it's in it's in telugu and there are many different factions within india and there has been some controversy about how you know it it depicts um uh the freedom fighters as being like uh, you know, Hindu, the the Hindu god, Lord Rama, or not? He's not a god; he's a figure. I'm not sure. He's he's a mythical figure in in Hindu mythology. I think he's an avatar of of. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just because he's Vishnu. blue. No, I just uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying there's like a misallocation of of like responsibility or merit for right? Like some people have talked about it being like propaganda about you know the 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 the, the Indians fight against the British Empire and how like because there is some like right wing nationalism going on in India mm -hmm. on the it, then some of that's Hindu and some of there are other factions. So I'm just saying that like from our perspective as outsiders, we're watching this and it's like we're not really invested in any yeah. one part of it. I'm also in, I'm receiving or absorbing like one percent of this film, right? <laughs> Compared to all the different layers that are possibly right. there. Yes, yes. 100%. Well, not only because it's in a foreign language and watching subtitles, it's in a foreign language that has then been dubbed into another foreign language, Hindi, and Such we're watching. And there's just also I layers. Wish... There's layers to it. It'd be like, oh, he's from, he's like when she, when he uses the, when he fashions that Bengal bracelet in like two seconds <laughs> from extruded raw material to a finished hardened cured and he's bracelet. Able to write a message in, for his yeah, sister. In the time that takes this other chick to like buy a scarf, he can do this. <laughs> Which is annoying me when I'm watching this. And then, <laughs> but anyways, the fact that he gives it to his sister and she doesn't read anything on it. She just receives it and goes, oh, and she knows. So to me, I'm like, how? Is it like a tartan? Like, is it like, oh, you're the color of that thing? indicates you're from this region like there's so much that i don't get yeah they don't just tell you i'm what not is, indian right like i'm assuming that something there's a message on written on it that's because it's self-evident if you're indian maybe it must be i just figured well no i don't think we get a close-up of no. like what the actual i just figured that's it means. I, well we don't so therefore i think there's no message written on it. i think it's just like if it's used that color or that pattern I think that means I don't know, to me that it's might just be like a... as an audience you can figure out that there's a message you don't need to see what it says like right. maybe they had a shot and it was cheesy it was like i'm coming sis and right but we don't like, even see him writing yeah. I don't think there because, is writing. Because the other thing is that, like... Okay, Maybe someone in the comments could help us out. Yeah, that's She fair. could have... Jenny could have just r happened to buy a bangle with, like, s symbols from her tribe or whatever you know it's like yeah. maybe that happened but it seemed like she was like oh this means something. something i mean maybe but like i don't think it was a message actually it might have been to, it just reminded her of home and it made her happy maybe. and that was the main thing that he did that but didn't she say like my brother or I is coming to, i I, I found that drama worked really well for me like from as soon as she's taken even oh, the, the, the reveal of like oh they're giving you money as like a tip for her singing and then they put her in the car and then she runs. And then when when uh, Beam finally finds her in the palace and they're talking through the gate, 
that was really effective for me. Like they I, really took their time yeah. for him to be like hugging the bars and crying, even though yeah. he was putting himself at risk. And then when she's like, "I want to go now. I want to go now," and he can't. Yeah. Like there's nothing to do. He goes away, but then he's like, "I can't leave you." That I was actually a really felt hard a scene. lot. But it, it does bring us back to the language jump, and I actually paused the movie. And I was trying to find a different service. I was going to buy the movie mm. to watch it in Telugu. You can subscribe to ZEE5, which is like an Indian uh, streaming service. And I was going to do it, but you could only buy it in co- like three months at a time. And it was 30 bucks US. Oh. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's stupid. So I pirated it. <laughs> <laughs> but then it didn't have subs. And I downloaded subs, but they weren't synced. And I like, oh, man, man, it's a bad experience. Yeah, Netflix, that's a lot to do on a Sunday night. Yeah. And it was like already 10, 15, 10, 15, 10 30. And I was like, still had two and a half hours left of this movie. And Netflix, man, the Hindi version, it's fine. Like, I got over it. But it, it's not a great dub. Like, the audio quality is really off. And, like, is the it? voices are too... I, the way I was on it, the voices overpowered all of the, like, the yeah. audio scape. And you can tell it's recorded in a booth. Yeah, it I didn't know super it, I didn't ADR, know it was yeah. dubbed, though, but I just thought it was ADR. I was like, yeah. why... Yeah, you know the ADR sound. Yeah. But now it all makes sense. And I wonder how much better... I'm going to rewatch this movie. I'm going to find, like, oh, a better definitely. version. And I want to know how much better it is. Because my rating's a little bit buffered because I there was emotional moments that didn't land quite right for me because yeah. you're like, wow, that's really good. And then it's like, oh, the voice and the lips aren't working together. Or See, there's like, the lyrics. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like their Buddy Love theme song. When the lyrics are so on the nose. It was, <laughs> it was like... That's look, so great, though. I love, I love that. It. Look at this twist of fate that culminates in their yeah. journey. Yeah, yeah but like, I what love the okay, fuck but, is but wait, this? Wait, wait, wait. If it was dubbed into English, I would totally be on board with you. I'd be like, this is so corny and cheesy and, like, uh, annoying. But the fact that it is, that I can't, like, I'm just imagining that it sounds better in the original mm-hmm. language. So, so you're I'm just like, giving it, like, a buff in your mind. You're like, of course. Yeah, if this was, like, in its native language, this lang- it would be, like, super well, but, cool. But you can, you have to, because, like, yeah. I, you know, not having that natural, like, direct See, imbibing I the language experience, I, I have to give it that buffer. I have to give it some room. But why? Because... I'm. I, th- there's no translation error between the visuals and my eyes, and they're cringe as fuck. So I just assume every element of this movie is cringe as fuck. Well, I it think- is. It is cringe, but cringe can be good if you open your heart. They don't have the <laughs> word for cringe. But that's what I'm saying. There's two would, different standards. See, of cringe. I, actually, I, I, I wouldn't call it cringe. I just call it cheese. It's corny. Yeah, I think it's it's it's, 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 it's corny by North American standards. But I think uh, it, it's just. And, and but just to clarify, yeah, yeah. not to put. When you say standards, I, I, not to put it on like a spectrum where it's like in 20 more years of cinema, they'll get to where we're at no, today. I, right. I, I'm saying equal but different and I, it's just not for me. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Mm. See, yeah. I did. I do think that um, not to say that they will get to where we are or any uh, other version of that. But I do think that it's interesting that um, Indian cinema, cinema seems to be at this place where Hollywood was many decades ago where we ha- would have like a musical number in the at the end or the beginning of a of a movie even if it's not necessarily like strictly a musical like that was that was something that that happened sometimes in the like sort of the old timey uh 50s uh 60s hollywood movies maybe before then but um i just thought that was i thought that was beautiful to I, have like yeah. that sort of earnestness and just be like okay this is a serious movie it's about serious characters with serious missions and like People are being ripped away from their parents and like there's there's horrible terrorism happening in the land uh, from the British Empire. Yeah, well, not, not the other way. Colonialism <laughs> happening. We're supposed to cheer for the <laughs> Brits, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, we're just going to take a second and have these characters do like a goofy, fun yeah. dance scene because yeah. it's fun. Yeah. We don't need really a reason. And so, so it's just interesting to see that like element still being there. Whereas, yeah. like in over here in the West, we seem to have we 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 decide that that's cringe. We we go away from. Yeah, that. I feel like we don't really get stuff that's just pure and earnest anymore. Yeah. And yeah. it's because we're so cynical. And I think we it we would make fun of it too much. Like on social media, you'd be like, "Wow, they're really trying so hard." But it's I find it refreshing. Yeah, just like let um to have a movie be like it's all good. Just lower your guard and just. Just, just let it happen. Yeah, I think one of the I'm this is what this is partially why I'm really excited to see Lightyear next year, uh, next year, <laughs> next week, because having rewatched the Toy Story movies uh, many times uh, now that my kid is of watching age, so uh, he it, th- they're great movies, and I think animated kids movies are one of the last mediums here in the West that have that sort of earnest 100%. nature, where it's just like 
okay, we might have a couple like tongue in cheek things for the parents, but for the most part, it's just like, you know, it. There's a bunch of things happening. You suspend your disbelief, and it's fine yeah. because. This You're is a about, child. This is about raw, true human emotion that hasn't really been tainted, tainted by yeah. like the adult sensibility of like, but that wouldn't work. Yeah. Uh, well, I think like that's even the best like adult movies get there. Like everything, ever all at once. It's a really earnest movie, but it just has to work so fucking hard right. to get your brain to just like let it yeah. get, get you there. Honestly, I mm. think that's probably a big part of its success because mm-hmm. like I think the main one of the main themes in that movie is cynicism versus optimism totally or or hope yeah yeah whereas yeah all media now is so <clears throat> cynical and it's like we have such a hopeless sense in everything we watch everyone's just waiting for climate change to come and kill us all and we're already cynical <laughs> question for you okay why does raju care about finding the painter's brother right because he goes to that like meet up and he's like hey i'm looking for someone who wants to kill the governor and that guy is sympathetic to that and he ends up capturing that guy and beating the crap out of his knee and he's like, where's your brother? Where's your brother? But why does he want to find the brother so much? He's, his real mission for which he'll be promoted is to find this shepherd character, not this dude's one brother. I, so what the hell was going on there? Well, I thought that was what he was at. Like, I thought in his mind, his brother is the guy. Why would it be? What do you I'm, mean? I'm not sure. There's definitely a few things I feel like I missed in terms of like either the translation or the subs were like missing a detail. And I just was like, I, I, it's me. I'm well, I don't, it. I don't know if, I don't know if, um, so that guy's called Lachu. I don't know if Lachu was, uh, like being interrogated by Raju just to be like, like when Raju says, where's your brother? I'm not sure whether Raju means, um, y- your random person that is like a stepping you know, stone like, towards me finding beam. Like every, every older male is uncle. Is that what you mean? So like when you say brother. No, I just mean I just mean I'm not sure whether Raju knows that Lachu is directly connected to to Beam or whether he thinks that Lachu is part of this network of people who are like rebels and he wants to just find the next person and like follow the trail. So I yeah. don't know if I yeah, don't know if he knows how important Lachu it, is. But he doesn't see Beam as like some mastermind of a giant terrorist network. Beam is just this one villager who's going to come and get that one kid back to bring that kid back to his particular village. Yeah, I'm not sure. I yeah, maybe I missed something there. I, I just sure. assumed that I missed something. Or there's something lost in translation. I don't know. Um, but I I will say that kind of circles around to I think one of my main problems with the movie, which is not a main problem because I fucking love this movie. But what they do with Beam, I think like they kind of do Beam dirty, man. His intro's so badass. Yeah, like, he's, he's not covered, topless enough. That's for sure, dude. He's so jacked. But like ever every time after that, they kind of give him frumpy clothing. Yeah. But it's like. They and it's such a weird. I guess they use a lot thing. of makeup for those abs. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think he's like he's just like stocky and yeah. thick. But uh, well, like he, when he's pulling those two ropes yeah. together, he looks like a friggin' bodybuilder. Body, like, yeah. it's awesome. But and then he pulls the ropes an inch, and the cat goes back two feet. I'm like, oh, okay. And well. then we, we kind of touched on it where he's he's like it's bouncing. He's smitten by Jenny. I think that whole romance is kind of stupid because he's like this oh, amazing God. hero. Can I go off on that? Yeah, for go a for second, it. Please. But I don't think he thinks of himself as some like badass no, hero. I don't think he thinks that. he's just like a humble guy from the forest trying to get this kid back. It was just a little heavy handed for me. I was sure. like, ah, oh, okay, and like I yeah. don't know. I, it is a, a strange characterization. I think that there's definitely like a lost in translation thing happening maybe. there where like maybe he is more impressive to Indian yeah. audiences and to yeah. us where like you kind of like your hair is a little unkempt, like it doesn't look cool, like you look kind of weird. Yeah. But like he, maybe that's just... He looks endearing. There's a me. certain... There's he looks a very certain, friendly and approachable. There's He's a certain, of, certain sense of sensitivity inherent in masculinity in Indian culture that we don't really have over here. Like sure. they, they can hold hands while walking down the street. It's not a big deal. And like, there's a lot of people who were interpreting their friendship as like a gay romance but and Indian not. audiences are like, what are you talking about? They're just really, really They're good bros. friends. And that's what friend, that's what masculine friendship looks like over here, you know? But, um, sorry, what yeah, were you going to say, James? Go off, James. I have one more thing uh, to say about how they do Akhtar dirty, but it just, I just hated it so much that she can like, why would she want to see him again? Yeah. Invite him to this party or invite him <laughs> over for coffee when they can't speak to each other. Yeah. Not only is she... That was really frustrating. It's, a trans- <laughs> it's obviously a, a faux pas in her circle to bring commoners or native folk into into that comp- compound, let alone the front gate of it. 
And why would she risk all that when she can't even have a conversation? He's just a random guy. He should have been able to speak a little English. Like the jokes they yeah. get from the mistranslations are not. And then later funny on, enough. she briefs him on details of the prison so that he can break into it. You don't speak the same language. Yeah. How is she fucking? Is she just pointing at a map to him? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, there's a couple like toxic parts too where Raju is like, uh, no, Beam's like, oh, do you think she likes me? What do you mean? And Raju's like, she. She if, she if she didn't like you, why would she ride in the back of your motorcycle? You think she'd ride in your motor motorcycle if she didn't like you? The answer is yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, just, you just freaking blew out her tires yeah. and gave her no choice and then said you could take her to a repair shop. That's why she's on your motorcycle. It's not sexual at all. Yeah. yeah. Like that is tone deaf. So in that, in, yeah, that, I agree. in that point, at that point, I was like, okay, I don't know whether this is just like a lost in translation thing or whether it's like the movie's trying to say these are two you know, Indian guys and they are misinterpreting the signals that are being put forward. But like, it's clear it's from a little the movie old school. that yeah. she's definitely, well, it's Even 1920. Facts, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think it was a, I don't think it was like a historical fiction portrayal. I think it was a, uh, the filmmakers, the filmmakers mean, in 2021 yeah. well, don't get to it. To me, even the uh, fact that he... Well, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. It's, it's not clear to me that that's the case, but maybe. Yeah, I, I didn't like... As soon as he puts the nails on the ground and he's like, oh, he's going to pop her tires. I was like... <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's a problem. Like, yeah, is... The movie presents it as like, look how clever he is yeah, to yeah. talk to this girl. Like, he's just going to like damage her property yeah. and trap her. Yeah, and I thought that he wouldn't tell Beam that he did that. He was just going to be like... I don't know what fate <laughs> or whatever. That would have thing would have been cute because it keeps Beam innocent. Yeah. But he's like, I threw nails on her on her tire, and he's like, nice. He's they like, were, good thinking, brother. Yeah. So they were now she has no choice. Yeah, I don't there like were definitely a few parts like that where I was like, uh, I don't know about this, yeah. and it like it did like continually bother me that yeah. they didn't speak the same language, but they kept tr like she kept trying to hang out with them. Um, but and I say I this as someone who has definitely tried to fuck someone who doesn't speak their same language. <laughs> it's really hard. It's hard. Yeah. You're not sure whether it's worth it at that point. It's not. But um, what I was going to say is that I'm giving it a... I, I'm going to stand by it in my 9.5 rating because all of the other parts are just so strong. Like, so... Yeah. S <laughs> well, such a good time. That, like, having these little bits where I'm just kind of like, ah, I don't know if that plays in 2022. Well, but it's yeah. like, you know... Uh, and, and to me, like, my last problem with what they do with Beam is how he's so much less cool than Raju in the final fight. Like, yes, Raju is oh, like yeah. literally like a he, god, and he's like in this amazing attire, and he's like firing fire arrows, uh, and Beam just like has one moment where he uses water to like wet a spear and stab. Are a guy. you kidding me? He stomps this motorcycle and it but flips it. It's not. They don't incorporate his element, and I think that was a mistake. Is like fire oh, is such an essential piece. I see what you're and saying. And there's like this mystical. I agree element. with David. It really seemed like in that last 15 minutes that Raju became really the main character, yeah. and it was like his movie. Whereas prior to that, it was definitely, it was it was all beam for a while. I guess I don't for know. a while though, you also kind of thought Raju was evil, and then until the midpoint, and yes. then they reveal no, he's not just a race trader or right. whatever. He's he's doing this for a reason, and I think it is interesting. Of like is is getting weapons for this villager like the do the do the ends justify the means cuz he does fuck over a lot of his countrymen. Yeah, well, I thought that was a great dilemma. I I I completely um forgave Raju at that point. I was like, "You know what? That's fair. I don't know what I would do in that yeah. situation because it's like you have arguably a more important mission that could result in like people actually overthrowing the government instead of yeah. like helping this one girl get back to her and family." And we're also you know? shown that his logic is flawed or limited as well. Like when he, he reconciles the fact that he just saw Beam move people to action with a song. Yeah. He kind of questions, like, all the people I've screwed over because I have this plan. Right. Maybe I could have just done this differently and yeah. used my talents to raise an army and we yeah. could overthrow this country like, I, differently. I was kind of annoyed when he, post-Poison, he, he stops Beam. Because I'm like, I think you can use your recovery from being poisoned as a pretty good excuse to sit on the sidelines and let Beam do his thing. But he didn't want to let Beam do his thing. He, he needed that promotion. He needed the promotion. He needed mm. to capture Beam. I thought it was lame because, A, that one guy's like, there's no cure from this anywhere. Oh, actually, my, my literal brother has the cure. So was well, he I lying? Guess he, I like, guess he just figured that... Convenient. I don't think that he knew... No, it's a gone like, tribal secret. Yeah, yeah, but, okay. but Lachu's gone. Yeah. And I, I don't think he knew that Raju was friends with Beam. No, so he's not. like, you, there's no way for you to get the antidote except from like my people and you're not going to get that. And then when Raju shows up at the compound, it's like, oh, he had time to go get changed. 
Because he needs to show Beam that he's a, an officer in a visual way. So I guess he stepped at home and put on his like well, he was best at, dress. He was at home already. We see him like oh, yeah, this is we see him wrestling with the revelation and he's like punching his punching bag and like screaming and stuff. He punches the wall a million times. God, like so He has all that time to do that. So Dude, after that, he just so got dressed. hot in this movie. Damn it. Raju <laughs> is extremely attractive. The yeah. mustache. Woo! I was like, damn, dude. Were yeah. you guys confused Chiseled. after after that whole sequence and they do that weird like hand grip fire water meeting thing? It comes off of that just showing us characters we've never seen before and it turns out that's a flashback from his childhood. Yep. Were you guys lost for like a hot minute there? I'm pretty, I, no, I was like, okay, this is a flashback. Well, the, the, the coloring was a it, bit different. It was a little drab. Yeah. But there was like a good three minutes where I was like, who are these people? Oh, really? What are we doing? You here? didn't know it was a flashback? Is it Raju's dad? Like that it's, sequence? Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like we're we're on Raju in that moment, and then... No, we're on both of them. And we, and we don't see Raju as a kid for a few minutes, so we, we just meet his dad. Right. I it, was it, a little disoriented. It cuts, to it, it cuts to it after they're... Like, he's holding Beam by the thread yeah. or whatever, and then it cuts to, like, quote-unquote intermission, or interval what is what they call it, and then we go right to the flashbacks, and we have a few shots where it, like, focuses in on the kid... And I'm like, oh, that's probably Ra Raju. I knew that was Raju because yeah. we had seen him in a. I thought a flash before. And that, I, I'm pretty sure he calls him Raju, didn't he? Yeah, it gets yeah. You in when he's fighting. Oh, they when do he's show, fighting, They show. They show him shooting his. But it looks like he's shooting his dad. Yes. And now I was like, wait, what is this? That means like, what does this mean? I don't remember. Yeah, that. they have a couple like dad. really short clips yeah, 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 of yeah. The, from the flashback earlier in the movie. I mean, it becomes clear eventually anyway. Because that's what convinces him to go and go to the fight. Is he has that flashback of him shooting his dad? Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? What the fuck is this sequence? Yeah. Oh, in the fr when he goes to fight a million people. No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, just when he's at his own house fighting the. Um, like he's he's been cured with the antidote, okay, and he knows that Beam is Beam now, uh, yeah. and he's he's torn and he's punching the wall, uh, and there's a flash of him shooting this man. You don't know who they are. Yeah. You'll find out that's his dad, and he didn't shoot him for no reason. But that's the flashback, and that's when he gets the determination necessary. I missed that. Okay, thank to, you for that. Yeah, to go. So then, when you see that kid again, you know it's Raju. Man, we like we've talked a bit about the like the shots and stuff, and there are some shots where I'm like, oh, that's an impressive shot, just in terms of like normal cinematography but then they are, are all these like crazy shots that could be like a character poster that are like so fucking epic like <laughs> this when, movie is epic yeah, that is the best word like, for it yeah. when they when they have their fight in the governor's palace and then it does oh like the fire and water thing yeah. where like there's all the fireworks going off behind raju and then the beam water. is standing in front of the crushed water fountain and all the hoses are spraying like crazy i will say that's I'm just a, like and they, and they do this like speed ramping thing that like Zack snyder does all the time but like this is way it better. Works way better. It's so amazing. I will say that was a moment where I felt like they were doing Beam a little dirty. Where I'm like, oh man, Raju looks so much cooler right oh, now really? with all the fireworks and the fire and this all this. Guy's things. got malfunctioning landscaping. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know. I thought I thought was, Beam looked fucking badass with his like war paint and stuff and like the his his, <laughs> his like his Wolverine stone claw that he Wolverine uses one claw. Time. What's this yeah. that he stabs Raju right in the heart with these three knives? Yeah, I'm not sure whether that's nothing. Gonna be came of that. It yeah. didn't hurt him at all. I, I thought that was going to be like, oh my god, he just killed him. Right in the heart. Yeah. That didn't matter. Well, they, man, they, the movie does those They're death, that strong. They do those death fake outs. There's, yes. a, there's a few times where I felt like the movie was being a little cheap with how I was handling my emotions. Part of it was the Raju, like, is he evil, is he not stuff. I found like, uh, especially in, in hindsight, I'm like, I don't know. Like, it feels like the movie's purposely tricking the audience, not like telling the story in an authentic way. It's fine. Um, but then... The, the death fake out stuff like they make it seem like Raju's dead and they fake you fake out and then he's just captured and, and stuff and well, you're like, like I know he's not dead but like it felt like the movie was trying to like when he's me. freeing Molly yeah yeah and like Beam has the stick and he's like about to kill Raju yeah and then he stabs it down and you don't know what he did yeah but you see what he did I was two like oh shit he killed him or but then and then when it when reveals see, yeah when he sees I like that reveal that was a good one because it came right away yeah but then when he's like holding the other he's fighting off the other people so that Beam and Molly can get away mm -hmm. and then he kind of like gives up. And I, oh. I was like, I don't know. I, I, oh, I just didn't felt, see that as a death fake out. Same with the mom. Either. The mom dying. I thought, like, yeah, I thought she I was thought dead. She was and dead. That, yeah. When she came back, I was like, oh, that's a little too easy. Yeah. Finger twitch, guys. Yeah. Man, how about when <laughs> Lady Buxton just has that damn whip? She's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, she just has that? <laughs> yeah. I was like, where'd you get that? She's like, try this one. Also, so annoying. She had hard R's. Yes, yes. I noticed those yeah, R's. I had, like, to, I had to Google her. her name. Like, we don't care about the British accents. Jenny was good. Uh, the the governor was good. 
There were uh, like Buxton's a, last side characters were iffy. The actor's last name is Duty. I know. I love that. Allison and Duty. That's how good her accents I, are. Yeah, I would say none of them really hit hard. I liked the evil cop or the evil military dude, the one that looks like Fat oh, the, Hopper, the semi boss. Yeah, I Fat like, Hopper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how uh, Beam dispatches him. Just you know, like the one big punch. Same okay. with when Raju fucking fire punches the tiger. Yeah, that was I so wanted to bring sick. that up. Yo, I was like, that. is he gonna fucking? Yeah. And he just. Punches. Oh, anyways, yeah, that James. mini boss though, that was yeah. actually the moment where I was like, "This is exactly the kind of movie I hate," oh. because it was exactly like Snowpiercer, the movie from Bong uh, Bong Joon Ho, where it was like they open the door in that movie and there's a room full of uh, guys all with the same weapon and mask. It's like, okay, this is a video game. There's yeah. no, mm. it's just like not a tone that resonates with me. As soon as that he like had the key, locked the door, was stand, it was an obstacle in the way. Yeah. You must defeat me. I was like. You're a mini boss. This is a video game. I hate this. Yeah. I, I dig it. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't seem video game me to me. I think it was just kind of like, he's got a key, he needs the key. I think it was like, there wasn't a sense that he like, okay, there's a bunch of goons and then he beats up the goons and then after the goons, there's a big boss. It was just kind of like, this character had been set up. That's right? literally what happened. That's literally what happened. Well, they yeah, showed up. There's a bunch of Englishmen. The but, animals took him out. But I didn't see that as him like fighting through people and then get there's the boss. It was just like there were still people running all the way around. It's like he got attacked by people and then the other guy came to attack him. No. It, it didn't seem as much like he was like working his way through a level or okay. something because it was all I, in the same place. Even if it was, was like that, it wouldn't bother me because I'm 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 there for that tone. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's it's fine. But it, I can see why it, it put you off. I was confused about how they're. Um, both on like these extremely urgent missions that they should be spending like most if not all of their time on and they, they just detour to be buds <laughs> we get yeah. after the train rescue scene we get this like super long song with the lit very literal lyrics where they're just like frolicking around just like doing buddy stuff which made me a little like, bit sad you should be busy because the movie the movie gets there but I was like oh are we just not going to see why they're best friends like all the things that shape their friendship and it was I don't know I thought it was weird but then they, they do do that so I thought it was a bit implausible that Beam wouldn't have revealed his mission. I didn't think it was super top secret. I can understand that Raju wouldn't reveal that he's a cop and doing an investigation, but I thought that Beam hanging out with someone for like a week, probably, would have been like, well, yeah, I'm trying to find this kid from my village. I'm not from here. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like fair. I got the feeling that it was very dangerous for them to be there, and he had this whole alias. He was like posing as a Muslim mechanic, and you know, we've, all, I think, we've all done it. I think the only people that we actually witness him talking about the mission with her and the only people that we witness him befriending is well he's friends with his like other tribesmen and then he's friends with Raju and that's like we don't see anything else so I was just kind of like I can understand how they're they're not from the city they're forest people you know they are undercover they, in every sense of the word their friendship is based on this daring act when they saved this kid at the bridge yeah they like immediately were kindred spirits in, in daring feats of rescue like like yeah. immediately they're like okay. I can trust you you're fucking badass I, I think I'll I'll you, get on board with you here if you a met bit. that guy yeah. wouldn't you be like man let's go save this kid can you help me we'll yeah. do get this done before dinner yeah well not only that but like they're spending a lot of time together what are they talking about if they're not talking about <laughs> what like, do you have where are common? you from yeah like what do you like to do like well I like to hunt in the forest I with go, my people I go to the mosque yeah hey I'm looking for a forest people guy <laughs> <laughs> like that's fair and it's like mean, how did it not come up. It is one of those movies that, to me, I don't think about too much about the reality that I'm not shown. I just yes, you the the experience and the frames that you are shown is the only reality that matters. And everything else, there's a possibility that yeah. it worked. If it yeah. showed them, if it showed them just like chilling and talking about nothing, then yeah. I think I'd probably be like, how have they not talked about this yet? Sure. But it's it's every scene is very like, okay, we're trying to meet Jenny. Okay, we're trying to do this, and like it, there's no there's no like frivolous scenes where nothing's happening. Look at that montage though. Well, the montage, but they're not they're talk talking. Like we, we don't hear them talking. The talking yeah. It's all the okay, David. How do you feel about <laughs> things that you're shown that are just dumb? Like, uh, okay, we have a necklace, and I'm gonna break it in half with my hand. The holy thread. And then we see it later, and it's like a perfectly curved, like almost like a yin yang curve. It's designed. Like, There's no way to break that. No, but it's it's I at that point my suspension of disbelief is like yeah. that doesn't exist. One hundred. Yeah, it's one hundred. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's one hundred. So like, the person I was watching it with. And uh, another life, you could have been a trumper. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, but uh, the person I was, with was like, "Wait, how does how is that how does the necklace still fit together like after a whole fight?" And I was like, 
the dude just like broke out of a prison on someone else's shoulder. You're really yeah, worried about yeah. that? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why is he? He's trying to find him in jail and they're pounding on the ground. Do, 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 do. Oh, he's coming. Yeah, no one can <laughs> hear <laughs> it. It's like, put your fingers through the grate. Yeah. He can look. Scan the no, whole thing. Yeah, then I actually then the guards too. would see the fingers, but not the oh. guy like shuffling around on the ground. Exactly. I'm just like they just wanted to have this in to have it in. Like, what if they can detect each other like freaking snakes? <laughs> what, was it the same beat that was in the first song? Because I didn't know. I didn't recognize the beat, but I'm like guessing yeah. that it's like a thing that we've seen. I thought that it was the same beat that the guy used to attract the snake, but that maybe, wouldn't be something that ties yeah, them together. it probably wasn't. No. Maybe audience, you can let us know. Um. What, what I was confused about when he's interrogating Lachu and he get then he gets poisoned by the snake, and after that he's kind of like, it will take you a day to get out of these bonds, but like yeah. live, go and live well. It's, it's, was, he's just saying I'm not killing you. I'm just like delaying you. Yeah, but like why would he not be? It's a weird. Thing. But at that point, at that point, we don't know Raju's true mission, and I think that's why it was jarring because now I'm like, okay, he's actually on the side of the people. And so he knows he's going to die now. So like the jig is up. So he's just going to be nice to this guy. That's fair. But at the same time, I was kind of like, are you'd be probably pretty pissed that this guy just killed you in slow motion to me. You wouldn't just be like, Hey, you know what? You won. Here you go. To me. I read it as like the movie being like, look how honorable he is that like once he's defeated, he, he, he humbly accepts it. And he like, he concedes and lets this guy live. And I I thought it was kind of cheap but with your explanation of like, He's he's a man of the people, and he doesn't actually want to kill these people. He just is on his mission. I think it's still pretty he wants jarring, to beat though. The shit out of your knee. I think because yeah. we don't know that at that point, though, it is pretty jarring. Yeah, yeah. yeah a guy I, that I old. That. It took me out of it a bit. That guy can get out of bed wrong and have a knee injury for the rest of his life. <laughs> oh, when you're that old, man, they, he beats the shit out of his knee. That, speaking of that speaking hurts. of getting out of bed, but he stumbles out of bed on the right side, and then the camera cuts to him falling into his books that are all on the other side of the bed. Yeah, it's like he crossed the whole room oh, and then I fell missed, over. I missed that, but I found another <laughs> continuity error okay. at the end. He's uh, beam jumps on that motorcycle. It's clearly a two seater motorcycle. There's a seat behind him that's just a big empty space for a person. Uh, and then the, there's a cut, and he's on a different motorcycle. That only has one seat. Huh. I didn't mm. notice that. The one that he like ultimately throws, I guess. Man, oh, weird. All the yeah. all the final fight stuff when they're like whipping the fire around, and he like catches the motorcycle and he throws the motorcycle. Yeah. All that stuff, thrilling. It's just I so great. I actually it. have a hit pick from that sequence. My only, my my maybe one of two hit picks. I really <laughs> where I was like, that's cool. <laughs> He shoots an arrow through the tree and then he kicked it to make oh, it go yeah. into the guy's that ear. Was sick. That I was, was like, sick. I was and then like he, yeah. And with that kick, then he bounces off in the <laughs> other direction and yeah. fires another arrow. That's pretty sweet. That was pretty I, I gotta say, like, I had like Star Wars level, Marvel level uh, hype vibes when um, Raju is revealed in his Lord Rama outfit. Like, it was pretty. They, cool. It's like shine the spotlight on him, and yeah, then he's like backlight, and the light is going, so and he's like sick. his long hair and beard is yeah. like flowing. He's shirtless. He's just yeah. like let's fucking. Like, yeah, it was so like sick. it was as if I had seen a depiction of something that I like loved in book or comic form, and it was like done well on the screen. Yeah, like Dune. It was yeah. like it was like Dune vibes of like they are nailing this. Totally. But I didn't even I had I no familiarity with this but character, it was so cool. which is, is is it attests a to triumph. this film and yeah. what it can make you feel. I, uh, oh. Fuck, what was I gonna say? I, can't I love it. I love it. I love it. This is the kind of movie people describe it as fun. It was. <laughs> Which it was super. This fun. isn't the same as good. See now, my question. I had a question. Are there people who unironically love these action scenes without also thinking they're hilarious and weird? Because the fact that I'm loving, like I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. But part of the reason why I'm loving it is because I've made this conscious, conscious decision to suspend my disbelief. And to just go along with it, even though it's like weird and hilarious at the same time. Like some of it's funny. Some of it is like it's badass and cool, but, but it's, it's funny. also funny. For sure. So are there people who watch this movie and are just like, it was absolutely cool and they think that it's really cool on the level of like Yeah, I think there's a whole country of those people do. I don't think that I think I don't think so. I don't think they're like, <laughs> that's totally like Well, that's my question. That's sweet. I think no, I think they're like high fiving, like, that's so sick. Yeah. But like it's silly and it's crazy and it's stupid, but like that's the fun. I don't I think, think so. I think people can just tell us in the comments, but my assumption is that like if you're from this region of India, like this is your cinema, I think they think of it the same way as people think of like Marvel movies here. Not everyone in the in the country is going to like this shit, but the kinds who are going to go see a Marvel movie are like, it's awesome. The Hulk punches really hard. It's great. Like yeah. I don't think they see it as less. They probably think of it as completely equal to a Marvel movie, not like, oh yeah, it's like fun. Once you buy into that, it's like kind of stupid. 
No, but, well, but, but no, but it's not stupid. I think stupid is a wrong word because now we're like ranking it as worse. It's like it, there's an element of so like, I guess artificial. Yeah, where you accept the art, art the artifice of it, like. Like there's a guy running on another guy's shoulders, and they he spins around and does like equilibrium shots yes. and shit. Like, there yeah. I don't think anyone. The is unreality like, of it. The unreality is so far that you just accept it as cool, and like I accepted it as cool. It was like that's pretty fucking sick that he's yeah. like nailing these people. They fly through. He hangs on the side of a thing, does like a full like flip, <laughs> and then uh, the freaking uh, like uh, Octar kicks him. Like it's so it's so crazy. Yeah, but it's cool. Like I thought it was genuinely yeah. cool. See, I think it is. So what I, my position is that if you're from there, this is just like genuinely, authentically super cool. See, it's I, not like we're for if you're for me being from here. And maybe not everyone feels this way, but for me, I would have to be like twelve or younger, and I would I would be like, "This is so sick." So but then as soon as I get older than that, I'm like, "This is uh, bananas." I, it's like fun if I turn if I turn my brain so off. So I I think that there is so like you know Indian viewers, you can let us know in the comments yeah. if this is if they're way off or something. But I feel like the uh, uh, the aspect of these action scenes that make it like hilarious and weird, you know, it's it's kind of funny because we know that a regular human can't stomp a motorcycle and have it flip around <laughs> in midair and catch it and then throw it at someone else. Like, if we saw that in a Marvel movie, Western audiences, we'd be like, okay, that's Captain, Captain America. America. He can There's do that rules. because he had the super yes. soldier serum and he's super strong. Yes. These are not super soldier serum people. There's no canonical reason why they should be able to do these amazing feats. Yeah. But, but they there can is d- because they're mythical figures. The, well, they're sure. mi- but they're yeah. still humans, and I think yeah. that they know that they're humans. Yep. And maybe there's some people who are like, oh, they had spiritual help or something. But I think that for the most part, um, it seems like, especially with this director and especially with like Tollywood stuff as opposed to Bollywood, I, like Bollywood seems to have elements of this stuff, but the Tollywood stuff made by Rajamuli is like even more so that way. Yeah. So I think that there is a level of, okay, we know that it's hilarious and we know that it's kind of silly, but we're all deciding as a culture just to go along with it and we're deciding yeah. that it doesn't really matter that much. Whereas there are probably other movies that exist in Indian cinema where they do the sort of thing that we do for a Marvel movie where yeah. like, okay, but that doesn't work because yeah. in the other movie he really... You know, I've he, seen so few Indian movies that's like, what if I just watched Kill Bill and I think that that's like all American movies have that kind of stylistic violence. I'm like, right, well, this is a total one-off. This, I have yeah, no idea. The stuff that makes it to us, those YouTube clips that make it to us are going to be the most crazy ones. And right. to me... The non-scientific distinction as to why this works is that it never felt like I was laughing at the movie. It felt like I was laughing with the movie. Yes. And I think like the action is like, I wasn't like, man, this movie is so stupid and dumb. It was like, this movie is so weird that this is so crazy and it's awesome. It's not like The Room where you're watching it and you're laughing because it's so bad unintentionally bad yeah, yeah. you're laughing because it's intentionally cool. not bad but it's intentionally corny it's intentionally totally. over the top yeah yes they definitely got on screen what they wanted to get on screen where it's yeah. like the room no i'm i feel like the blood on the the, the sunsets on the british empire and then the blood like splashing on that is like a good indication of that cuz that's just like we are not being subtle there's no subtlety here yeah. it's all straight there's up no in your subtext. face there's yes no subtext. yes <laughs> Yes, the sub the, the there's just text. Yeah, declar- the text yeah. is evil British people oppressing Indians. Indians fight back. They succeed. But it it, yeah. it appeals to my reptile brain in the sense that like I was fucking cheering and like everyone I was watching with we were like so pumped when like they defeat the king and we're like man I hope he gets killed so bad I wanted to die so <laughs> hard and then like the the governess is there and her blood lands and you're like nice he wanted she wanted blood she got her blood bitch. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely be more fun to watch this with people. I had the sense when I was watching it, I was like, I would love to do commentary on this. I would love to just like mm. tell jokes as this is playing. Right. It'd be so fun. So, James, let me ask you, when you get to the end and there's that big giant dance sequence seemingly out of nowhere, because we're not used to this happening, were you smiling or no? Yeah, I was. Uh, were... it endeared me. I was like, this is fun. But I was also kept hitting the, the button to see this progress bar. I was like, <laughs> how, was, how, how, how short are the credits? How long yeah, yeah. God damn. I was, for the last half hour, I was like, when is this going to end? That wasn't credits. That was the, da- that was the ending dance No, but sequence. normally you look at the runtime and you're like, hey, it's it's two hours. But 10 minutes of that is going to be credits. So it's really 150. So I was waiting for that to um, happen. And then it didn't happen. I was like, ugh. <laughs> so like... The part in the dance sequence that I made me go like, wait, what? Is when the random guy shows up with a white beard and I haven't seen him. He's not in the movie. Yeah. I'm no. like, who's that? It's a director. Ah. Yeah, I, fi- I figured stuff like that was going on. And then it showed all these historical figures and I was like, 
I had no idea yeah. any of these people were real. I don't know who these people are. I feel like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I think I definitely like, I mean, I didn't know who it, but I think that's what's beautiful about the film. I didn't know anything about this going in. Yep. And it was like, I had the same experience that I would have watching like the best or, or even higher than the best Marvel movie. Yeah. Like, cause there's actually like cultural War. importance to it. Like there's a message and like, I felt educated a little bit and I felt like just excited to learn more. No, about I it. didn't feel educated. It was, uh, well, all this, the villainy was so cartoonish that I felt like I didn't learn anything factual. I definitely, all. I definitely did not feel educated, but it made me want to like educate yourself. look stuff up. Like, sure. I feel like I'd yeah, never really thought accurate. about, you know, yeah. the colonialism, the ideas like thrown around a lot is like this bad thing a lot today. And I'm like, you know, that's the way things were back then, you know, whatever. But like this movie is depicting it as the, like, they're literally like fascists, like as bad or worse than the Nazis. And like, you know, horrible things are happening. And I'm like, holy shit, this makes me want to look into these things no, more. Like, if you watch Schindler's List, you're like, but wow, at the, at that's same, how at, it was. At the same time, this is fictional, right? And they're like playing everything up. Yeah. So, so when like, you watch this, the only thing I can take away was Indian population was not happy with this setup. <laughs> That's all I know. Yes. Anything more granular than that is out the window. Right, right. I mean, they if we were talking just numbers of death, not even like era of 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 uh of uh like oppression, the British are responsible for the death of 35 million Indian people. Jeez so it's Louise. it's like the Holocaust times Over the like whole time five. They were <laughs> there insane. though cuz they were there for like 150 years or something. That's what I'm guessing. So it's like it's not quite comparable. Um but it's it's pretty excessive. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I don't doubt that at all. I just don't. It, this movie was just so cartoonish that there's. Yeah. I can't be like, did you know that like a bull, uh, they <laughs> yeah. wouldn't even use a bullet and that like. Did you know that they the, both fought tigers at different know, times? They had these really sharp whips under their dresses. <laughs> you're okay, just to so pull out at any the time. The idea like, that the movie educated me is probably not right, but you're right. It got me excited to learn more and even like got me thinking about certain dynamics about like the different tribes and how like they're kind of isolated. Kind of stupid that we don't learn about that in uh, Canadian yeah. high school because A, we're part of the Commonwealth and B, there's a lot large Indian population here. Like I should really know more about that. But yeah. I feel like it's probably it's kind of crazy partly how little because I know. we're part of the Commonwealth that like our education has kind of trickled down from England. I remember and they don't want to there's talk a lot about of First Nations yeah. stuff to learn here as well. Yeah. And I, I remember learning. Learn. I remember learning about like some uh, of like British colonialism and stuff, but they never. I don't. Rem, I don't recall coming away with the implica- with the idea that it was like horribly brutal. You know, it was just kind of yeah. like, and then the British took took over this colony and blah blah, right. blah and then they imported this and exported that. Yeah, they got their independence, so I guess uh, the British are pretty nice to give them that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you don't. Yeah. yeah. They left. That's nice. Maybe we need more of that in our <laughs> curriculum. Yep. I actually do think we could. Great. See well, you later. I'm done high school, though, so I'll never learn it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that this movie, you should watch it, even after listening to this podcast. Oh, I would be down if someone wanted to give us recommendations for documentaries, if we wanted to sure. like actually learn if there's any cool, very factual documentaries about oh, yeah, this for sure. part of history. I'd be down Indeed. to watch oh, that. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate that if you're a Western... Uh, a non-Indian person and you haven't delved into and the idea of watching like a, a Bollywood Tollywood movie intimidates you this is don't, I mean James had a bad time if James was if James was a different movie when you watched this I think you would have loved it yeah yeah and, and a different expectation definitely check think, this out it's on Netflix yeah. it's easy yeah I would yeah I think I know now what Indian mo- well no this is quite different than we've I'm done doing. two this is quite different it is quite different. different I much prefer this yes Anudun was like I don't know. It was fun than stupid than dark. This was just like awesome. I think that I I think that the the mistranslation of cultural elements is more of an obstacle in Andadun than it is in this one. Fair. This one anyone can enjoy. Yeah, it's kind of a universal themes. Yes. Fuck white men. (laughs) Honestly, yeah. Fuck us. Come and fuck us for free. (laughs) We'll fuck you. Bye. White women though. What? Jenny and all the white women are totally fine. Jenny. There's not right, enough you time can, to develop. You okay. can email us, uh, hello at they're just movies.com. You can tweet at us. What is it? Lightyear. Come back, Lightyear. No, what's tweet our Twitter? Us? What? Uh, at TJM Pod. At TJM Pod. <laughs> yeah, Lightyear next year. We're going to do it. Love you. We're going to do the guests. We don't know who's going to be. No James, though. We don't know. Tune oh, in to yeah. find out. James this is the most is chaotic outro we've ever done. I'm not going to be on the next four episodes. It's guys. end. Oh. See ya. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. It's over. It's over.